Greetings from Cybertron. This is Soundjack here with another episode of Soundjack's Rambles. And today I'm joined by Alyssa. Hello. Excuse me. <laughs> Hiccup. Uh, and today we're talking about uh, Captain Marvel, the latest Ye MCU film. Yeesh. Uh, so, okay. So, first things first. Uh, how did we get introduced to Captain Marvel? I'll let you start. Um, I mean, pretty much just the trailer for Captain Marvel. Like, because I'm pretty sure even the end credit scene in Infinity War where we see the Captain Marvel symbol on, like, the modified pager? Modified yeah. pager. Like, I didn't know what that was when I saw it for the first time. I'm sure most people who are like me didn't know what that meant. Unless you were a humongous comic nerd, then you might. I only, I'll say I only knew what that was because I knew what films were coming up. Right. So it made sense. Um, but yeah, yeah, I also, but yeah, but also for me, I don't, didn't know anything about Captain Marvel before this film. Um, I, I knew she was a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like so many uh, comic book characters, um, I only know them as a thing, as they are a thing. Um, right. So, and uh, I've had friends in college that have like talked about like the stuff uh, in relation to other aspects of Captain Marvel, but not too much about Captain Marvel specifically. Right. So, like, um, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, pretty much, pretty much, this film was the introduction. Yeah, and same for me. Like, I'm not. I don't really read superhero comics. I never did read superhero comics growing up. The only comics I really read a lot as a child were anime and manga, and that was yeah. basically my big thing. Mm -hmm. And also regular books, which also are kind of a nerd thing. So, yeah. Um. And the only comics that I really read nowadays are, like, more graphic novel-oriented stuff. I don't really read too many superhero comics. But you still gotta keep reading Transformers. Well, yeah, the Transformers comics, too. But that's, that's yeah. like, an exception to the rule. I read, um, like, I think comics-wise, I'm probably more a web comics person. I read a lot of web comics. I think there are about... Six or so that I read regularly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still always looking for more. Uh, but the problem is that there, there are a lot of webcomics that are like really strange, but like not in a good way. Like, okay. like there's this one webcomic that I found called Menage a Soir, and I feel like just saying the title kind of gives you an indication as to what kind of content Menage a Trois focuses on. Okay. Uh, that comic was weird and weird. Yeah. And then they also did like another one that was like um, a comic about, I think, vampires going to school or something. Yeah, there was like it was like vampires living in normal world, but there was a lot of like weird things happening. Okay, but uh... I know, I know, side tangent, but like basically my point is is that my familiarity with comics begins and ends with anime and manga, occasional graphic novels, i.e., Scott Pilgrim and Giant Days. I think is the other one that I am reading pretty regularly at this point. Okay. And some of the IDW, Transformers IDW, but that's more Michael, and webcomics. Because of me, yeah. And that's, that's basically it. Superhero comics is like a whole world that I have not even scratched the surface on. And like the only ones I have read are like the free comic book day stuff that I get every year. Mm -hmm. Which like... Yeah. Sometimes it's like a random thing and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So. Uh, but anywho, um, 
Before we get into spoilers, do we recommend this film? Um, so, yes and no. Yes, I recommend okay. it. So, so don't worry, I'm not bopping this film for being bad or anything. Yes, I recommend it if you're, if you liked the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for the most part, I'd say thumbs up, you'll probably like this movie too. And I'd especially say you'd probably would like it, like, even if, especially for people who, like, maybe aren't watching all of the Marvel movies, like, maybe if you're, if you're more like me and you've watched, like, bits and pieces here and there, this one's also good because it's, like, a standalone film, so it doesn't really, like, honestly, honestly, with Captain Marvel, even though it's, like, in the very last stages of the, the whole thing, and you and it does and while captain marvel does tie into avengers especially avengers endgame you could in theory watch captain marvel as a standalone film and come away from it with a satis with being satisfied yes like even though one of the main characters is nick fury who is more introduced in previous marvel projects I still feel like they, because it's more of an origin for Nick Fury as a character, it feels less like you have to know things. And like, yeah, there obviously are like inter interlocking stuff. Nick Fury, Coulson's there, uh, Ronan the Accuser's there. But like Ronan the Accuser is like a bit part. And like, honestly, even if you've never seen Guardians of the Galaxy, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, and, and that's and that's the, to me, I think... Uh, standalone films are probably the ones that, in my opinion, would be the best for a general audience. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're if if you like the Super Marvel Cinematic Universe and and or you like Super Mar uh the Marvel movies, but you aren't like too keyed into the universe, like you haven't watched every movie and or you don't care to watch every movie, Captain Marvel is a fine enough movie to pick up on its own. Yeah. And 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 the way and the ways in which it builds on the other Marvel movies is like pretty incidental. Mm -hmm. Um. So the other thing is so the reason why I say yes and no is that I don't know. So if you aren't the biggest fan of Marvel of the Marvel Cinematic Universe model, I don't think this movie would be one that would like grab you you know what i mean like i feel like if you're someone who's either like a not very interested in it or b burnt out on superhero films in general i'm kind of like well this one it's not going to convince you it's not like a new take on the genre it's not a fresh bold outlook the only new thing about it is that it's the first marvel movie with a female protagonist as the main character but that's basically it. <laughs> like, that's the only really, in my opinion, new, new thing it brings to the table. Um, at least on, across the broad strokes. Obviously, there are details that are new and original and fresh. But if you aren't, if you aren't too keen on the Marvel movies, like, it's not like the Black Panther where Afrofuturism as an aesthetic and or, like, uh, a genre is fresh enough that I would say that even someone who's not too keen on superhero movies or Marvel movies in general could probably enjoy Black Panther fine. Um, just for that aspect of it, it's that to that's to me, um, that to me doesn't apply to Captain Marvel in my humble opinion. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's no. completely fine that it's not it's not doing anything too wildly new. Um, yeah. And I enjoyed my time with it. So uh, yeah. this is not me like crapping on the movie. This is just me as a film reviewer, I guess, if I can call myself that at this point. <laughs> More like <laughs> talk about them enough. We've posted enough of our opinions to the internet. 
if you, if you are watching the if if you are watching these podcasts looking more for should I see this movie, I would say that's just my thing. Like I don't think this yeah. movie I think this movie has a broad enough appeal, but I also feel like it's not the kind of movie that I would say definitely see it. Even if you're not even if you're hesitant, you know what I mean? Okay. Like I feel like I would okay. say that about like Black Panther or like the older Spider-Man movies. Like I would say go see it even if you're hesitant about the whole superhero thing, but this one I wouldn't say that about. So. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I know I know I know that was like a long long take, but There you go. That's so how I'll be brief with mine. Yep. I'm just go- I'm going to flat out say yes. Okay. Um, because a good uh, woman empowerment film, yep. and B, there's a, a, another message that I think is very important mm-hmm. uh, within the film. Granted, it's much more of an interesting point if you have context from the comics. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's spoiler territory, so I'll talk about that later. But I, I do think it's worth it. Um, yeah. Yes. Even if you might be a little skeptical, like it, again, Alyssa's right. It doesn't like do anything particularly new with like the superhero movie formula, but I and it's not the best of the Marvel films. But there's a lot of good Marvel films, so like you know, it's kind of hard. Yeah, but and you know the the worst always surpass previous films right also also like this is kind of hard or i'm really frustrated slightly about us recording because not because i don't have good thoughts about the movie but i my mom and i are going to see this movie the movie again tomorrow so i'm kind of like man if only things had lined up a bit better maybe i could have watched it and had some more stealth takes stealth yep. hot takes about this movie but yeah, I, if, I don't if only i didn't have work tomorrow night um <laughs> we would have also had an eric here yeah um, that would have been interesting to go have annoy some... eric cronover on twitter hashtag his twitter is eric Kronover. so just go just go just go mention him in like any tweet yeah fill up his mentions make his phone blow up for me but like, do don't it. tell, don't tell me, don't tell him I did that. Told you to do that. Just, just do it though. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Let's I move feel on. Like, well, I feel like out of all the podcasts he listen that he, that I put out, he listens to the Marvel ones, so he'll hear that. Oh really? I, I feel like I'm not <laughs> oh, certain, no. but if he does, well, well, Eric Crowbar or Eric Cronover, I should say, if if you are listening, uh, I don't know, feel free to yell at me at some point. Yep. I'm okay, sure he anyway. would. I'm um, sure. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. So let's get actually into spoiler territory. Yep. If you haven't watched this movie yet, look the other way. Yes. Just do a nice swerve to the yeah. other direction. Okay. So where to start? Where's uh, a good? Where do you think we want to start with? I think let's start with characters, and let's start with uh, the title character, Captain Marvel. Um, I, I think, uh, the character Captain Marvel, I, I, I do like, um, sort of her thing. And I, I do think, I do think it's kind of clever in that, um, a lot of her life and the way in that she lives is like, uh, uh well there's the whole memory thing, you know. Oh, well, okay, well I I think the thing I think um man, I'm like flailing around in, in the ocean. I'm like drowning in my own thoughts. It's great. <laughs> I mean, I like her. I don't know. I I don't I don't know if I don't know if I have any like really cogent thoughts about her as a character. Um it it does feel like it's very much a story that revolves around identity, I guess. Yeah. Character arc wise, like this idea of her like sort of being stolen from her home and forcibly becoming a Cree. Yeah. I guess. Um I I'm also I'm also really 
uh, slightly excited, but, like, also pretty excited that they totally just unabashedly made her powers, like, a freak accident thing. You know, like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of superhero movies would have to have, like, the scientifically accurate explanation for why this person can shoot lasers out of her hands. And, and, and then it's just like, no, she just, explosion caught in the crossfire, now she's magic. And you know what? I am here for those crazy comic book things. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I do, I am happy about that. Um. I think her, um, I think, I think what I like also about her character as, as portrayed in the movie too, is that her, her being the, I mean, obviously Marvel was trying to like really lean into the idea of her being the first female Marvel superhero that we were really encountering in like a big way. Obviously Mm -hmm. not the first one, Black Widow's still around. But, like, let's be real, Black Widow in the Grand Pantheon of Superheroes in the MCU is, like... I mean, I know she's a big figure in, like, Captain America's continuity, in the Avengers. But, like, like power-wise, like, I feel like Mystique or Storm or basically every other X-Men before comes before, um... I almost said Black Arachnia. I almost said Black Arachnia. <laughs> in my defense, in my defense, they are both they are both spider related. So the 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 omission. Okay. They're, they're both they're both spider related. They both have good martial arts skills. They're both hot. They they both really want to bone. Uh, a. Uh, 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 a knight in shining armor (laughs) yeah yeah they both really want to bone a knight in shining armor one of them happens to one of one of them is a guy plucked out of time the other one is a half half hawk half wolf abomination of nature (laughs) i love say that about captain america I mean, yeah, Captain America is also kind of a freak of nature, too. So, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. Freak of natures are just really interesting, right? So, yeah. okay. Again, have you seen uh, people's response to Venom? Uh, no, I mean, like, I do not doubt the capability of the human brain to want to uh, <laughs> do some You're things that you with have to some doubt. non-human entities. Like, like I, I am very... Con- like. Like I, th- I feel like a lot of sci-fi has humans as the ones who breed with everyone, right? Like they're the ones who are like that weird ass alien. I want that weird ass alien, and I love how like sci-fi kind of distills that urge that all humans have, and then just makes it, it bakes it into their sci-fi universe. Okay. I know this is like off topic. Also, but like another unrelated off topic. Imagine. AU of the Avengers except replace Black Widow with Black Arachnia. Everything else is the same. Just Black Arachnia is, is there instead of Black Widow. Yeah. No one comments on it. Like no one no one is like, oh wow, what's this weird robot alien doing in our in the rest of the humanoid people thing? It's just, it's just like, yeah, she's there she is, Black Arachnia. She's a Transformer, she's just in this universe, it's fine. Yep. Anyway, back to Captain Marvel. Back to Captain Marvel. My point is, is that, um, Captain Marvel has a lot of powers. Captain and... Marvel has a lot of powers, and I think, I mean, I I definitely see her as like a Superman analog. Like, I feel like Captain Marvel is like Marvel's answer to Superman. Yeah. I mean, obviously Superman, obviously Captain Marvel, I don't think has the kind of, like, uh, symbology that Captain Marvel does, and I don't know if Captain Marvel, obviously Captain Marvel's not, like, is not the kind of, like, truth, justice, and American way kind of person that Superman is. Like, Superman typically, in good 
continuities. Typically doesn't kill people. But like yeah. Captain Marvel's not above that. No. So um I guess her superman manness comes more from her power set than it does from her yeah. ideology, put it that way. Oh yeah. So according to our friend John, uh she could she could kick uh Superman's butt. Power set wise? Kicks. Yeah, power set wise. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I have yet to go on to the Reddit who would win, but I'm sure I'm sure that's a question that's on there. Yeah. Like we're getting off touch when we when we're talking about the characters, so let's just jump into the plot and then hit on the characters. Well, actually, um, yeah, I I, just, there... I guess I just kind of I I guess my point is is that I like Captain Marvel. <laughs> I don't know if I have much to say about her. Yeah. I do say I do want to talk about Nick Fury though. Okay. So I think Nick Fury is is interesting. Um. Uh, I so I think the only thing that was really confused about was uh he was a member of shield but was shield in the 90s the, the same like shield as it is in the present day like what i mean by that is are they like a subsection of the government that deals with like extraterrestrial things or is that more of a thing that was established in this movie and shield was... it seems like it was a thing that was established in this movie okay because that's what i thought i thought like shield was just like a division of the government or something like an agency like like like, yeah. a, like an fbi equivalent but then after captain marvel comes to earth they're like oh i guess space things are a thing we should probably yeah. have a government thing for this just yeah. in case i mean shield was a thing all the way back in Captain America's time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that is right. Yeah, so, like, they were used to dealing with weirder stuff. Right. That That is fair. I mean, Hydra. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, they weren't fully aware of the extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial aspect mm -hmm. until about this, the 90s, it seems. Yep. I, I, uh, I guess I completely, like, forgot about Captain America for like five yeah. seconds. It's been a while since I've seen that first movie. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, so I think Nick. I mean, Nick Fury takes a more comic relief role in this film. Mm -hmm. He's less badass, I will admit. Yeah. No, yeah. He yeah. he does have a couple good scenes, but like he he seems more comic relief than yeah. than like the actual like ass kicker, which I, it's fine. Um. Yeah. He's still young. he's still starting out. He's got another decade before he he gets the the, the full on trench coat eye patch combo working. Right. I also I I love like I was thinking to myself because I when I saw that oh Nick Fury doesn't have the eye patch I was like okay this could go either two ways one it's he loses it in like a badass fight and it's like a like a grim like awesome scene. Or two, it's like a funny, a funny thing. It's a funny scene. Yep. And it seems like they went for round two, which is funny, where his scar yeah. is because a, 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 a cat a who's not really a cat. A flurkin. A flurkin, whatever that is, scratches him. And yep. that's what gives him the I remember punch. before the movie came out, everyone was like, oh, the cat's going to be the reason why Nick Fury doesn't have his eye. Okay. Uh, but they all thought it was because the cat was a scroll. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but that was not the case. Nope. Uh, um, I mean, I, I'm wondering if like Nick Fury's eye patch has a similar origin story in the comics, or if it's, or if it's pretty much the same. Let me see if I can't ask the uh, group chat where Nick Fury's eye patch come from in the comics. Because like I'm curious to see if like this is like a bold new take or if this is like in line with what we've seen in the comics and i say we by we i mean like collective nerds i don't mean me personally obviously um so yeah i think nick fury's role is still good glad to see samuel jackson still is here being a good sport even yep. though he's like five million years old yeah 
Uh, they did use uh, they did digitally digitally DH him twenty five years. Yeah, I did see that. I did notice that. I was like, he he probably they probably had to like do a bunch of makeup slash CGI to make him look younger because like, same same with Coulson too. Yeah. Um, and then uh, one of the things that I like like one of the things that um, oh I forget what I'm trying to say. So, okay, what, what did you think of the villain in this movie? Because, like, the joke is that Marvel movies are known for their core villains, right? Yeah. Like, that, they're full, that their villains are typically pretty lame. Yeah. And, I, like, Loki is obviously a standout villain. Yeah. Because Tom Hiddleston just always gives the best performances. Yep. Um, and I guess Thanos might be the more like recognizable slash yeah villain that people like a lot in the marvel yeah. mcu i'm trying to think other what other villains i I'd say killmonger from black panther was also well respected but it's all but more so because he had a he had a really strong resonating background right like i, I understood yeah. why he was doing what he was doing right very much so. Uh, well, not because I personally have the experience, but from my understanding of the the, the, the African experience, uh, right. especially in America, I I cannot blame him. Right. Yeah. No. 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 Not at African, all. Not at all. But I understand it a lot. Um, but I think this one was interesting because it's definitely not the one we were expecting. Um, right. Well, unless like I, I, I mean, I didn't know. I would say I was coming into it, not knowing anything about Captain Marvel. So I wasn't sure. I, I didn't know who the Kree was, but I feel like I kind of had a bad feeling about the main, about the Jude Law. I forget his, his, his character name. Jude Law. Yon Rog. John Rock. I'm just gonna call him Jude Law because it's easier. Fair. Fair. <laughs> so like Jude Law's fair. character, I'm like I I saw him and then I was like, well, as soon as Ronan popped up, as soon as Ronan was revealed to be part of the Cree, like I'm sure I'm sure like like really attentive MCU movie watchers, garbage could have probably caught on to that a lot faster than I did. Yeah. Like I've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but I didn't realize that Ronin was Cree, or that that yeah. was the name of his race. Because you know I don't, I'm not a lore, I'm not into the lore the way others are in the MCU. But hey, I forgot he was actually Cree until he showed up. I'm like, oh right, that's right, they're the same species. So like, so like as soon as I saw him show up, I was like, well. So, like, it is still possible that, like, Ronin is an outlier, but I feel like if we have a villain talking to this other guy who could be a villain, and we have this whole mystery about, like, um, Captain Marvel or ve Veers, as her uh, Kree name is, her backstory is coming to light, I'm like, well... I feel like that then means that Jude Law's character is suspect and that there might be more than meets the eye in the story. Uh -huh. Look at that. Two yeah. Transformers references in one episode, guys. You are so lucky. Yes. Um, I'm not going to lie. I had weird suspicions mm -hmm. uh, at the very start with the dialogue of... Um, like, how to... Can't, to turn off your emotions. Right, yeah. Uh, and I was like, that doesn't feel right. Well, no, because emotions are... Yeah. Emotions are extremely vital to the human experience, and not necessarily because... Like, emotions are one of the thing, key ways in which we as humans make, like decisions including the kind of decisions that save lives like fear is an emotion and fear is what motivates people to get out of danger like yeah. you, you go you if your building's burning down 
your fear of dying to the fire will motivate you to get out of the building. So mm -hmm. emotions aren't bad. They don't cloud yeah. judgment all the time. Sometimes they can, but like other times emotions can be what helps you make the right decision. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I do feel like the idea of it does, it does, it did feel like the Jude Law's motivation was clearly to uh, disempower uh, yeah. Veers and her emotions. What was, what's her like real name? <laughs> uh, Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers, there we go, Carol. Like, I, I, it's very obvious to me that that was a big part of why he was training her that way. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I wasn't, like, totally taken by surprise that Jude Law was the villain. Yeah. Also, it's Jude Law. Like, okay, like, like Jude Law uh, doesn't make a habit of playing villains in movies. Like, actually, the, the roles that I know him for or that I recognize him in and I remember him from have all been, like, protagonists. Like, uh, John Watson from the Robert Downey Jr. version of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Or... Or Gigolo Joe from AI. <clears throat> AI is a weird movie. Um... Jigolo Joe is just like a funny name, but uh, he is an he's a main character in that one, and he's not a villain. Um, I mean, he played Lemony Snicket in the movie adaptation of the series of Vulture Events, and Lemony Snicket's not a villain. So, so my point is, is that Jude Law doesn't make a habit of playing a villain. It's not like Michael Keaton. Where like Michael Peaton has played has played quite a few villains, or like uh what's another uh Vincent Price? There we go. It's not like Vincent Price, like right, like if they had casted, I mean I know Vincent Price is dead, but like imagine if they had casted Vincent Price in the role of uh, Jude Law, mm -hmm. <laughs> like we would all know instantly, like oh it's the villain, he's the villain, like. Mr. Price doesn't play anyone but like snotty snotty butt lunches, you know? Yeah. So my point is is that Jude Law Jude Law isn't like a typecasted person as a villain. No oh, yeah. He he can he does play a lot of different roles, so but at the same time I feel like oh it's Jude Law. He's like a pretty well known actor. Like, typically in these types of movies, not all the times, but a lot of the times, they do cast, like, well-known actors in the villain roles. Yeah. You know, think about Tom Hiddleston, uh, I don't remember, uh, Josh Brolin is kind of well-known. I don't know mm -hmm. how well-known he is outside of Thanos. Yeah. But I, it's a name I know, recognize. Well, it might be Jordan for uh, Killmonger. Michael B. Jordan, yep. Um, oh, who plays who played Ego? I not pa what? not Patrick Swayze. What the hell? No, oh. no, no, no. He, Patrick Swayze is also dead. <laughs> yeah, they took they revived Patrick Swayze for the role. Yeah. I forget his name, but 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 that guy, he's also yeah. well known. He's also a very famous actor. No, oh, yeah. And obviously, it's not like a like a rule that's set in stone, you know. Like I'm pretty sure Ronan's actor isn't that famous. Mm -hmm. Neither's Red Skulls. Or... I'm. I mean, I think we get the point. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so my point is, is that Jude Law makes sense as the villain because he's a he's a he's top billing or one of the top billings. So. And like yeah. I know that seems like a meta thing, right? Like like yeah. me like me noticing that is like kind of almost gamifying the yeah. plot. <laughs> but my but like okay, put it this way, even though I kind kind of like wasn't that surprised that Jude Law was the villain. Mm -hmm. I wasn't it's not like it's a scenario of like that I that my ability to read that was a bad thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like like just but, because you can see no. a twist coming doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad twist. No. Uh though uh, if you were uh 
uh, a comic fan, it was a twist to a, a, an extent. Yes. Um, because, I mean, as it's been explained to me, the Kree are still um, uh, butt munches um, mm. in the comics. Um, but the Skrull were not nice people either. Um, they they were what the, the, the Kree called them in the movies. They were terrorists um, in the comics. And mm-hmm. in the original comics, they were... Um, the ones that did the big invasion in New York that the Avengers movie was based on, but they changed that to the Shatari. Yep. Uh, but in this film, the plot twist is actually the, the the scroll are just trying to survive. They're refugees. They're being tracked down and hunted. Um, mm-hmm. And that um, uh, the fir- the that uh, Doctor Wendy Larson. Uh, aka Marvell, who was um, uh, Carol's like commander, yep, um, was trying to help with, um, because she found out the Cree were actually just attacking innocent people at this point, um, mm-hmm. and wanted to help them, and then she was attacked. Uh, by uh, Jude Law, who then ca- captured uh, Carol when she got absorbed the powers of the light speed engine. Yeah. Uh, who had been training and wiped her, me- well, not wiped her memories, but like modified her memories. Um, yeah. And was training her for six years. Yep. It's crazy. Um, yeah. But this is the, the part. I was talking about in the intro just for the nature of this film being a refugee story. Yeah. And it's a refugee story of a group of people that a lot of people have high suspicions of. Right. Um, from, I guess you could say comic book propaganda, I guess in this case, but in the in the film unit but because in the film universe there's no reason to believe it besides either a what you knew previously or b what the the creed told us right i i I was i had remembered subconsciously that the creed were big bad people um Mm -hmm. and i was waiting for the point in the film where Oh no, they actually are also bad. Right. But that never came, and I'm actually kind of glad for it. Yeah, and I, I do think I do appreciate the way in which uh the the um the movie leans into the uh presupposed knowledge of any hardcore comic fans and twists it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that I think is 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 a good part, and it's also great because like it works double duty, right? As you said, like if you don't know the comics, you're just taking the Kree's word for things, and you yeah. don't have any evidence other to believe otherwise that these people might not be who the Kree say they are. Yeah. Really, I mean, the one of the first things we see them do is essentially torture. Um. <laughs> Carol? They didn't really torture her. They didn't they torture just... her. They were but they were they were they were extracting information from her head and messing around with her. But yeah. basically she was a prisoner, right? So like yeah. obviously like you associate locking up people like that as a bad guy thing. Not some yeah. noble people would do. Yeah. So uh, this also plays into uh a moment Talos mentions mm-hmm. yeah. um, when Captain Marvel apologizes for the other scroll she's killed. She was personally responsible for killing. Yeah. Um, and he's like, it's fine. We both have blood on our hands. And there is a moment um, later on when he shoots up some of the, the Kree yeah. uh, to help the other scroll escape. 
Yeah. Um, war is war. Right. And it sucks. Yeah. And if you get involved in fighting, you're you're not innocent, no matter what. Um, though some people have more noble intentions than others. Right. Um. That you can also get misled by propaganda, of course. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's an interesting. It's an interesting film at an interesting time. Yeah, it is. I I do I, I do think I do think that that's true. Uh, yeah. I think I think you know, and I think it's interesting because in some respects the Marvel movie kind of uses Marvel movies have always for the most part have like tried to use the sort of goofy comic book scenarios to sort of explore the kind of harsh realities of of the of of like our our own reality. So yeah. But like, but like, in a way that's sort of distant enough that people aren't. It doesn't feel too real, and I yeah. think that that's that's one of the strengths of the MCU and also of this movie too. It's um, very true. Though I'm certain if people, um, though I'm certain there are people that, um, even if they are the type of people that complain about, oh, there's a fe- this strong independent female character. Mm-hmm. Uh, so coming out of the film being like, oh, they changed the scrolls. It was a good change. We didn't need another Shatari. No. No. I think I think I think that it adds dimension to the story. And it, I mean like like what's the point of doing a an adaptation of comics for this kind of audience without reimagining some things? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's to me is to me. The best kind of adaptations aren't necessarily the ones that stick strictly to the source material. Mm-hmm. Like, there is a lot of mileage that you can get out of sticking strictly to the source material. But I feel like the best adaptations are the ones that's, that make changes, but also basically tell the story within the spirit of the original, uh, whatever that original may be. Yeah. And, yeah, those, those are like the best adaptations. In my opinion, like the kind of adaptations that I don't like, like of books that I really like that I thought sucked. I didn't think they sucked because, oh, this character wasn't in the book or, oh, they changed this little tiny inconsequential thing for this tiny inconsequential thing. It's more, oh, they didn't bother to keep intact the thing that made this story so good. Yeah. Like I am legend um is a famous example of a movie where because where like the real power of the book was erased because the 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 movie decided to make a move make it change the ending or change parts of it to make it to make the the whole reason why anyone would like that story less cogent, and I mean you know it is possible to like create and like you could like to create an adaptation that's wildly different from its predecessor and still have it be well liked. Like Shrek is very much not the same thing as the storybook it's based off of. Like like the storybook by William Stive, the the picture book that Shrek's based on is it's still quirky and there's still some like funny humor in it, but it it's it's not it's not the kind of humor that's in Shrek. Yeah. How's about also like the changes that happen in basically every single fairy tale Disney appropriated for their film animated franchise? I mean, yeah, that's true. Um like all the changes in Peter Pan and mm. The differences of Cinderella and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think we, we so many tangents. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I I do I don't mind the change. Is my point, point. and like I wasn't even aware of the change when it happened. But I I don't see any problem. I think for the movie that it for this story and for this movie, 
I think it makes sense and I think it ties into it. You know what I mean? Especially since it ties into the way in which not only was the whole idea of the scroll being a lie, but the idea of Carol's entire worldview and life are false too yeah. and that she has to rebuild that. So Yeah. Like in sort so of a lot of ways they kind of put the scroll and the Carol as allies who have both been burned by the Cree. Yeah. You know, like the the scrolls are refugees, probably displaced, probably don't have a safe place to be and have been uprooted from their lives and same thing happened to Carol. She lived on Earth as a normal person, but then was uprooted by things out of her control, and she had no agency in that. And regaining her agency is a big part of the, the book, yeah. of the book, the movie. So, yeah. Indeed. So, uh, I think uh, we should talk about. Were there any like specific scenes that you really liked that you thought were like, "Ooh, I like this." Um, the reveal of the family on the ship. Mm. I did. I thought when I saw that, I thought this was this was the moment I was waiting for. This is the surprise attack, right? Um, but no, it was a sweet moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so much. Just, just, just made me convinced that yes, they are the, they are not the bad people. No. Uh, yeah. That was just nice and sweet. Um, though, I'm trying to remember what fights. Oh, the fight scene between a uh, Captain Marvel and um the Kree on mm -hmm. the ship. That was also really nice. Yeah. What about for you? Um, so I think I do agree. I think that the scene of the scroll reuniting was really sweet. Um, I also really liked um the sequence where the scroll were probing Carol's mind. I thought the yeah. way that they sort of framed that was really interesting. It felt it, you the uh, it was filmed in such a way that was very jarring and disorienting. So you kind of feel the way that Carol's feeling because she doesn't know what's going on and you can tell something's off. So that, that to me is really interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and we also, oh, we did talk about the Flurkin a little we bit. We did. Yeah. The Flurkin, <laughs> the Flurkin was funny. Um, yeah. I know I've seen I I've even seen toys of the Flurkin in stores. Sorry about that. Uh, I had a little bit of an interruption. My dog decided to join me. Mm -hmm. I think he's not in here yet, but maybe he will. Anyway, um, yeah, the I've seen toys of the Flurkin, and I guess for me the weird thing about it is that it's just a cat. Like as a toy, it's just a cat. Yeah. It's not like a cool alien <laughs> thing. It's just a, here's a cat toy. A toy if that's a cat, cat. That can uh that if it's if it's this plush one can spit tentacles out of its mouth. I mean like I'm sure they have I'm sure they have like toy versions of the cat spitting the tentacles, but I I saw like those Marvel Legend figures. Oh yeah. One of them was of the Flurkin. I was like oh, yeah. it's just a cat. <laughs> Okay. Like, man, I really want this ginger calico cat on my sh it's not calico. Cute cat. I mean a like cat. no no, like I'm not I'm not like roasting people who like cats or anything. I'm just saying in terms of like interesting toyetic designs, it's just yeah. a cat. It's not like with Captain Marvel where she has like a fancy outfit and everything. Yeah. It's it's just literally a cat. Yeah. Like even Rocky Raccoon has a jumpsuit and like a huge gun. Yeah. This is just a cat. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, the Florkin's funny. Uh, my hold on. What What are you doing, Chester? Okay, never mind. I thought he was trying to steal my socks yet again, but he's not. Thank no. goodness. No, so yeah. anyway, um, I do I do really like the Florkin. Uh, I was Nick Ferry the entire time. It was on screen. Yes. Like, look at the good kitty. Um, 
Uh, and then the kitty just ate the entirety of the Pesseract. It did. It has the stomach of envy. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't really have much to say of the Flurkin. Just a, you know, it was it was a funny it was a funny bit, and it was also a a it was really funny to see the like, because like at first you think oh the scroller overreacting it's just a cat. But then you realize, oh no, they were totally right the whole time. Yep. And it is not just a cat. At first I thought it was like a shrivel scenario, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. Like they're like it was just a totally harmless creature, but the like uh um well not totally harmless if you let them eat too much. Right, right. Uh, but you get my point. Right, I do. Like like harmless in the sense of doesn't pose any physical danger the way that like a bear poses physical danger. Yeah. Well like the the bad the the enemy species uh is afraid of them so they're a good um keeper in control. Yeah. Uh, but we're like, oh wait, we should like the scrolls and oh they were right about the flirtin. Yep. They were calling a cat. That's yeah. named Goose. Yep, Goose. Goose the cat the flurkin. Exactly. Um, um oh we should uh, briefly uh Maria Rambo. Yes. Yes. Um I I liked her character. Um I liked that Carol has like a connection to Earth. Yes. I find it weird that she doesn't have a family that she goes to. Like like, like her like, only the only connection she has is just her friend. Yeah. Though it seems she though from like what we got from her flashbacks, it seemed like she was a lot closer with Maria. Oh yeah. Like I think I think wrong. that it was pretty it was it was it was uh indicated that she had um that she had a rough family life. So yeah. it's not I mean like, you know. You can, you can, you can be like, you cannot like your family, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Or at the very least, with what her family was like, this was a better setup for her coming back to Earth. Yes. And it going over okay. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I could assume that with what we saw her father making comments of, that he probably wasn't too keen on her doing this special Air Force thing. No, probably not. Yeah, so this this was a good way to do it. And also, you know, just, just get her um, more human involvement. Yep. Uh, which was Which was needed with the fight which was good i'm glad I, I was a bit concerned when they were bringing her up that she wasn't going to be used or useful um, right it, yeah she did a good she did good she did yeah oh you oh you the you what the scene you thought was going to be an independence day reference yeah oh my god so like okay there's a scene where the um like they're flying through a canyon and there are aliens chasing after them, and I'm like, oh my god, they've got to. They have to make a... It's, it's basically similar in, in, in style to the way that, like, in Independence Day, Will Smith is being hunted by the alien ship. Yeah. I was like, they better have someone say, welcome to Earth. Like, I will be very upset if they don't. But they, they, didn't did. make, they didn't make the reference! They didn't make the reference, and I was very upset about it. What it's, year did Independence Day come out? 1994, I think. 1995? Around that time. I'm trying to see if there's an exact year. Oh, uh... It's 1995. It is 1995. Yeah, so... so, so it the same. So the same year, then. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. When Independence Day came out, but oh, like, to Google. 
But like you could have um, said, you could. I wouldn't have been upset if they had purposely made sure that the that this movie was set like oh, ninety six. Oh, ninety six. So they wouldn't have made the reference because the film didn't come out yet. Damn it! Ah. Oh. They got a reference to uh, a blockbuster in uh, Circuit City. They did, uh, Radio Shack. Radio Shack. Not Circuit City. Although, also another 80s, 90s relic. Yeah. R.I.P. Circuit City. Yep. Those things uh, were... It's so funny to me. Sorry, another tangent. Circuit City, though, was, like, so ubiquitous. I remember as a kid, like, yeah. they, they used to be all over. But, like, now... Yeah. No. They're nothing. They're not even a remembrance in TV shows or no, no. So yeah, it's... a block. <sighs> Excuse me. I mean, they make a lot of other '90s references. Yeah. But oh, I was like, I was like, really? Oh, like you're gonna so... have you're gonna rip off the scene from Independence Day and you're not gonna reference it when you totally could have because it's taking place in the '90s. But oh, yeah, so. if it's not, if, if, if they, they might, I feel like they probably totally were going to, or were thinking about it, but then we're like, oh, wait, we can't because yeah. it wouldn't, it would be a continuity error. Well, you <laughs> just reminded me. Yeah. So, so, well, let's also talk about this. Stanley. Oh, yeah. Film. Yeah, Stanley. The beginning of the film was a big tribute to Stanley instead of like, uh, the, Images the the footage of the different superheroes we saw all of the like the footage of the different um, Stan Lee cameos throughout the films. Yeah. And then uh, thank you, Stan Lee, at the start. Um, yeah. Which yeah. was very nice and very sweet. He um, was. But the, the interesting thing I'm going to bring up is um, Stan Lee's cameo in this film. Yes. Because uh, I found out it's him. It's Stan Lee actually playing Stan Lee because <laughs> the script he's reading and practicing lines for is the script for Mall Rats, where he appears as himself, <gasps> referencing the fact that he is the creator of characters like the Incredible Hulk and Spider Man. Oh my god. So, uh,. How does that, that line up in the in the that's, that's some meta. <laughs> that is some meta. Unless in this universe he just the, the the that line is different, he created other superheroes. I mean like I feel I feel like it's one of those things that you don't you just don't think too hard about. Yeah. You know, it's just like one of those fun little references. Rather yeah. than it being like it's canon now. Yeah. Spider Man is canon he, in Spider Man. He, that he could or he just coincidentally created those character ideas and then they just came to life later. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, he could have easily been inspired and been inspired by the real Captain America, too. Well, yeah, but he probably could. But, like, Spider-Man came out in the 60s. In this yeah. universe, Spider-Man didn't come to the fold until, like, 20 after... Well, again... 20 just after like 2012, the latest. You know? Huh? Like, like, just life imitating art, you know? I guess, yeah. Big old twinky dink because Peter Parker in this universe would never have read an actual comic book because he called uh he called the original Star Wars trilogy that really old movie. Right, yeah. <laughs> the kid. Uh, <laughs> uh so one of the things my my question though is is this Stanley Stanley Stanley's last cameo? They they had a couple recorded. There might still be one for Infinity War, uh, for the next Infinity War, or Endgame. Okay. Yeah. Endgame. They actually gave it a name. I forgot for a okay. moment. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I I'm not positive. If Eric was here, he could tell you. Right. Uh, but I think I know it was stated there were a couple recorded before his death. Okay. I assume I I believe that includes one for Endgame, and that might be the last one. Uh, what about Far From Spider Man, Far From Home? That's possible too. Okay. Oh yeah, because that's what July. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been. Um. I mean, I guess you got to think about what movies were in like production. 
Yeah. Before his death, right? Yeah. Like well, obviously Avengers Endgame. But I, probably I, I, far from home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, and if the, if if like in Endgame is the one, the last one, I'm sure there will be like an official statement being like, yeah, it's the last one. Don't keep right. an eye out. Right. Yeah. Just, just letting you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yep. Um. Yeah. It was. It it was. It's heartbreaking, and I do think they did handle it well. Like I think that was yes. a really touching tribute to Stanley. Yes, indeed. Um. So I was. So we've talked about a little bit about scenes you liked. I think we've t- touched on a couple background things. Stanley uh-huh. was like a background thing. Um. I guess my I guess the big next thing would be negatives, like any criticisms you had of the movie. Um, excuse me. You're excused. Um. Well, okay. Actually, there's an element that I do want to talk about. Okay. Um. So this movie was very clearly. Unlike a lot of the other Marvel movies, this movie was had some so had had has um gotten support from the army. Like oh, one yeah. of those movies that has gotten subsidies from the army. Like like they've they've got they like I know that they had a, in the credits like a bunch a bunch of um a a bu- 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 bunch of army units in the credits so yeah i think that that's a good indication that the that the pentagon signed off on this movie yeah and typically in movies that the pentagon signs off of basically they can get the subsidies to use actual army units in their movies if as long as their script is like okay as being good for the, Pen- from the pentagon's perspective yeah So in that case, typically the movies that tend to get these subsidies tend to be movies that are very positive towards the military or aren't too critical of the military. Yeah. Um, Also, apparently there's been like big like military promos that have like a lot of encouraging women to join be true heroes like Captain using like catch terms right yeah um and like yeah i guess like encourage make it less men thing like get more people more more women involved but like still it's the 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 american military yeah because because like that's that's kind of for me the the like double-edged sword when it comes to this movie like on one hand I'm obviously here for equality in the military. Yeah. Um, because I'm here for equality in any part of life. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm I'm I I I'm pretty sure I've made this pretty clear on most of my platforms. But I'm not the fondest of the military. No. Like I obviously respect veterans. I'm not trying yeah. to say that I don't respect them and I don't respect what they've done. You know, like I, I'm I feel like I'm very respectful towards that. Um, I mean, like, yeah. I, I, two of my grandparents, one of my grand grandparents and one of my great grandparents served in the military. One of them served in World War II and one of them served in the Korean War. And I also lost another, an uncle to the Vietnam War. So, mm-hmm. a great uncle, actually. But my point is, is that, like, I have military veterans in my family. So, or at least had, because all of them have passed. But, but, but like so I'm, I'm not here to say that like you know veterans are sucky or whatever but i i still feel i i feel like it's completely possible for you to respect veterans and wish them the best and honor yeah. them for their services while also being critical of the military and its periphery 
Especially like I don't think I don't think those things are mutually exclusive. I feel like a lot of people think feel like it is. Like I feel like as soon as people as soon as I start like raising my criticisms, people are like, "Oh, what you don't care about the veterans?" And I'm like, "No, like 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 that's not. It, it can I can be both." Yeah. I think we care about the veterans more than the government does. Shh. Shh. Don't 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 let them know we we feel that way. Yeah, yeah. so I, like uh, but, and I'm not going to I'm not going to talk much about how I feel about the military right now, but what I will say is that I'm always I'm always kind of like if a if a movie is like extremely like pro military, I'm always kind of I always kind of draw a I always look at it a little scant. Yeah, but I'm gonna say I'm kind of surprised that there's there was such a big military backing mm-hmm. because the military use in the film is pretty scant. Yeah, it's just shooting. It looks like it was just shooting at some military bases. Right. Um, right. It's not like we had like army guys running around. Right. Um, and I and I do and I do think I do think the the one part of the whole thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way or at least the most egregious thing that rubs me the wrong way is the fact that it's implied that Marv that Captain Marvel's colors and her design is inspired by the US Army. Oh, that's right. That cuz there's that one scene with a girl, I forget her name, Maria's daughter who she was helping her design change her design yeah and she said like i think the line was like since we're on the same team we should have the same colors and then it pans down to her shirt which is has a logo of the u.s army on it yeah so i'm just like hmm (laughs) like huh that has some implications i think yeah Anyway, <laughs> why did we get to this point? I was talking about how it felt really weird about I was talking about the U.S. Army's presence in this movie. I guess to me, because of that, because of all the movies that that have come out in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because the government, the U.S. government, and other explicitly political factions haven't really been a force, really. Like Shield, yes, is involved, and yes, the original well, Iron Man has that in there, but oh yeah. Most of the most recent Marvel movies and and large a large amount of the Marvel movies don't have explicitly the U.S. Army as like a force of good in the movie. Mm. Like like it's not like like Shield is an FBI equivalent. We can assume that Shield is a subset of the government and probably yeah. functions like the FBI, but they don't call Shield the FBI. No, oh, yeah. The, like like Nick Fury is not an FBI agent. Like he might as well be. But he's not. Yeah. He's an agent of Shield. So that's I feel like the same thing that that the, that's kind of similar to how the the Hydra is are Nazis, but they're not Nazis. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this movie, it's not like a fictionalized subset of the U.S. Air Force. Well, it is. Oh, is it? It's the it's the Pegasus program. Okay, it's yeah, specific, yeah, yeah, it is the Pegasus program. It's but a like specific they they specifically that, that they specifically was, have the US Army as like visible as an entity, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because, because, maybe maybe I'm full of No, because <laughs> Maria specifically says that they couldn't join the Air Force because that they were women and at the time the Air Force did not accept women. Okay. So they joined this science program right. that's not the air force right so like so so are you saying that like you think i'm full of yeah <laughs> if, if you can make oh, man. if you're able to make enough of a distinction between hydra and nazis i think you can make enough of a distinction between uh pegasus and the actual u.s air force Okay. Except for the fact that the actual U.S. Air Force appears on uh, the girl on Monica's shirt. That I have no arguments with. And that you are right on that. But there is more explicit 
military presence in Iron Man and Iron Man 2. Granted, those were a decade ago. Right. Um, you're right. There hasn't been a whole heck of a lot of it since. Right. Um, I, I guess but, for me... But I still do agree that, like, the the... the the military presence as it exists is weird in the film and what um uh, the um, campaign promotion whatever is going on that have included the US military and Captain Marvel mixing as much as they have are weird and not agreeable. Um Right. Like that's what I want to get at. That, right. Okay, this is this is why I was confused. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I might. I might. I'm sorry. Because but no, so, good, so my point, good, the original, like, the original point that I was trying to make, that probably got out of hand, was that the reason why I felt like it was weird that they had the whole thing is that it implies that Captain Marvel is like an ally, explicitly is an ally or associated with with the U.S. Army. Or is could be symbolically a representation of the U.S. Army, mm -hmm. right? No, so, yeah. So to me, that's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, so granted, oh. it feel it feels a little, it feels a little, a little, a little marketed, marketingy, is I guess. But this is interesting because at the beginning, we're comparing him to Superman, who's pulled probably the most famous phrase about him besides like look it's a bird it's a plane is uh truth justice in the american way right. um even though um he was created by jewish immigrants right in this film captain marvel is projecting immigrants yes which i mean that's also a statement it is we, it if is we are, if it we are in fact connecting making the comparison that captain marvel it represents america and that Captain Marvel does, in fact, do that, uh, that's the very least what a, America should be doing. Right. Um, and then, like, and, and I guess to, like... Like, I understand the qualms. I definitely agree with qualms of, like, represent her representing America as it currently is. Um, and it's, no, it's not necessarily her representing the United States. Because, yeah, like, military. Superman... Military. Yeah, Superman represents like captain america is exp even in his name is explicitly associated with the u.s but i yeah. don't have pr a problem with the way captain america represents the u.s because the way that the marvel cinematic universe portrays him is that he's supposed to be an idealized is he's supposed to be a symbol or associate with the united states in its most idealized utopian manner like, okay. he's supposed to yeah. represent, like, liberty. He's supposed to represent justice through the American way, that kind of thing. Yes. Right? Like, he doesn't... Captain America isn't aligned with... He isn't positioned to be aligned with any specific political structure or any specific president or administration or anything to do with the government of the United States, really. I, I mean, initially he was. Initially he was a... A propaganda tool, basically. Yeah, it was a propaganda tool. He he, when he did military time, he did. Well, his most notable military time, granted, was um, with the fictionalized military unit, the Howling Commandos. Yes, yes. So he, so so, um, Captain America originally started as a propaganda tool, but in this current incarnation of him, he's not really that. No. He is, yes, he's associated with the United States, but he's more associated with the United States idealized or the, the, the values and virtues of the U.S. as stated in the Constitution. Like the idea of like equality for people, representation, yep. that kind of thing. He's not meant to reflect any current political structure of the United States. Yep. He's, not, he's not a representation of the government. Yep. Captain Marvel, on the other hand, while I'm not trying to say that the movie is like trying to make her a one-to-one -one analog for the U.S. military, I do think it is really interesting how she is explicitly associated with not just the not just the United States as a general idea, but with specifically the U.S. Air Force, like 
a very specific, explicitly U.S. centric thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's not like it's. So I think Captain America and Captain Marvel are different in that way. And mm. that's really what I take umbrage with. I take umbrage with the fact that it's that she is specifically aligned with the U.S. military. Therefore, basically anything that she does is supposed to be a sort of embodiment of the values of the U.S. military. Okay. Okay. Yeah, aside, I see you know, like, I like I said, aside, like in the same way that Captain America is aligned with America as an idea, therefore his actions and his values and his outlook on life are supposed to be an embodiment of the American ideal. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of the same. You can argue the same thing for Superman, too. Yeah. Superman no, okay. often has those now, now I get it. Now I got it. Now I got it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That was a very roundabout way for my point. But that's no, that's I... that's the real reason why that moment was like a little... Yeah. Uh, because, like, yeah, basically they're saying that, like, if we if we are to take the, the discussion to this logical conclusion, Captain Marvel as a person, if she represents the U.S. Air Force, or she's supposed to embody the values of the U.S. Air Force, it's protection of the U.S., um, heroism, um, you know, protecting the innocent, and also the ability to just kind of kill people. <laughs> but them, but it's efficient. but it's but but like it's justified, I guess, justified killing. So those are just some of the just some of the ways in which that works out. So that that to me is my biggest negative about the movie is that I I'm not sure if I'm too if I really like the fact that she is, is associated with the U.S. military in this very explicit way. Mm-hmm. So okay, yeah, I got yeah, I, I got okay you. yeah. So sorry if that was really confusing, but that's that's my big that was my big point. Okay. But that's my yeah. big negative. Um, do you have any other big negatives? Uh, not particularly. Now that you say that, that's yeah, that's an onion. That's a huge onion. Yes. I I thought it was more so all outside, just in the again the media stuff relating to it. Right. Because again. The Air Force presence in the film, the military, the actual military presence is still small. It is mostly through that T-shirt, right? Um, yeah, and again, use of their bases. Um, but I do think it's still well done. Um, yeah, and I'm not. I'm not here to say that like if you like this movie, that means that you approve of everything the U.S. Air Force has ever done. Like, no, yeah. obviously not. Oh. I'm just. I'm just saying that that's something I noticed, and then I'm sort of going, hmm. Yeah. Interesting. This has some implications. Yeah. And I'm always here to encourage people to sort of think a bit more critically about the things they watch because I think it's really yeah. important to do that. So I'm not trying yeah. to say that you're. If you really like this movie, you like are absolutely signing off on everything the US military has ever done. Obviously not. I'm just I'm just wanted to point that out. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um like the only kind of thing I thought of while watching it mm. was like, why didn't she also destroy the ship Ronan was on? It was like, well she couldn't do that because then Ronan couldn't be in Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, yeah. Yeah, obviously. So for a few other ships, um, she also let go. Or was like, here's my power. Do you want to keep coming or do you want to go? Right. Um, okay. Yeah, now, now, I'm, now I'm realizing more about the, the badness about the connection with the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I, I, the gears are grinding. The gears are turning. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, what I will give the movie credit, it is very subtle about it. Yeah. You know, it's not in your face. And I, yeah, I feel I like I feel like that's kind of the point. They don't want it to be in your face because yeah. if it was in your face, people would be less likely to sign off on that on the yeah. movie. Whereas because it's very subtle, well. Yep. Yep. So um but yeah, okay. Mm. It's so, over. yeah. That's yeah, still overall good. I don't have it again. I don't really have any other specific onions. Yeah, me neither. Um, but before we sign off, before we wrap up, I wanted to bring the discussion to speculation about the future of the MCU in relation to this movie. Like, what do we think? Because we know that obviously this movie is sort of a preamble in in some ways to Endgame. Yeah. Right? Like, this movie is oh. supposed to be not necessarily a setup for Endgame, but it's. We're bringing in Captain Marvel as a major element of the movie. So, here's yeah. her origin story to tie into that. Yeah. So, I guess I guess I wanted you to. to I, just, I just wanted to, like. How, does, how do you think Captain Marvel is going to fit into the rest of the MCU? I mean. Like, do you think she'll become an Avenger? Is she going to be, like, a... Oh, yeah. She's going to be a full-on Avenger. Okay. Um, I think... I... I mean, it does... It kind of depends upon exactly what has happened to her in the 25-year span. If she did get... Help the Skrull find all of their lost um, members and did help them settle on a colony world before right. um, the snap... Right. Or whatnot. Um, but, I mean, uh, Endgame, out of the heroes that are still there, some of them aren't going to survive. No. They're going to want some new uh, Avengers, and I think Captain Marvel's going to be one of them. Probably, yeah. Um, though, of course, they're still going to be like, oh, yeah, we're the Avengers, but, like, we're all going to have our own special solo adventures. Uh, well, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I don't know if there's been comment about if there's going to be uh, Captain Marvel 2 at all. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. But I would not be surprised. No. Um, if there was... Um, no, I'll hope the military connection is lessened, uh, if that's the case. Me too. Whether Captain Marvel 2 is actually, like, showing off what happened between the intervening years. Right. Or is a more modern story, um, mm -hmm. post, uh, endgame. Right. Whatever. Oh, uh, speaking of that, uh, the, the week we're recording this, uh, James Gunn has been confirmed back to be on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yay! Just oh, reverse yeah. their really dumb decision. Woo! Once once he's done with uh, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, uh, Suicide Squad 2. What, what, how? How much weight do you feel like the fact that he signed on to work with a competitor like how how much of their redecision to rehire him was based on just because oh no, he's going to go right for our competitors now. I'm trying to determine, like the fact that they even reversed their decision. I think means that they had enough sense, regardless. Well, yeah. Um, regardless of the fact that he went to sign on with a, their big competitor. Right. Uh, but I'm certain that did have a notable impact. Right. Um, but I don't think I'd say it's the majority of why. No, probably not, but... I'm really glad that they reversed it. Yes, 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 yes. Because that That's was dumb. Affect the timeline. Huh? Oh, uh, so I wonder how it's going to affect the Marvel, the the movie release timeline. Oh, it probably. I mean, we know the movie has been pushed back. 
Yeah. And I feel like I feel like it might still be pushed back, even if they still had James Gunn on right. it on the project. So it well, depends I, on I, like I, I'm talking more in universe. Oh, okay. How how squiggly that's going to be. Granted, the Guardians of the Galaxy already are are already off on their own like adventures and whatnot. It's a different than say. Um, if this happened to the director of Captain America Civil War. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, that had to get pushed back to, like, after Spider-Man Home, Spider Homecoming or something. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I uh, gotcha. So, like, so they're able to work around it more, but I I'm, I'm still wonder what kind of effects it has to their overall plan. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Um, so... Do you think that Captain Marvel is going to, like, replace someone? Like, do you think that uh, out of the original Avengers cast, she's going to slot into, not necessarily replace someone, like, one-to-one, -one, but I mean, like, someone, one of the Avengers, some of the Avengers are going to, like, permanently get axed, and then she'll come in to fill that hole in the lineup? You know what I'm saying? Well, well I mean, the... Like, I'm not saying that, like, she replaces Iron Man because she's an Iron Man analog. It's more like, oh, now we only have five Avengers, but we need six, so Captain Marvel's going to be the sixth member. That That's what well, I'm trying to say. Well, it really, again, that really depends upon who dies. Um, right. Or who stays dead. Well, no. I mean, everyone who's currently dead is definitely coming back. I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess that's but, true. But, okay, I mean... Considering the, the people that they chose to kill off mm -hmm. with the snap... Yeah. I highly suspect, if, I'm, if it's not guaranteed, that they're going to be the ones that will live on after Endgame. They're protecting them by having them die now. Ah, that's a way to think about it, yeah. Yeah, that's why. Well, I well they could make Spider Man an Avenger too now. Oh yeah. Because he well, wasn't I, he wasn't he part of the Avengers at some point. I mean, in the comics, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like that's what Far From Home is going to be because after everything, well, it's either after everything or before everything. I think it's after everything. Yeah. Um, he's off in Europe, and then Fury is like, "Hey." We got things to do. Right. Like, I don't want this. I just want to be a normal boy for a vacation. Right, yeah. Um, so, he wouldn't be one after... Um, he wouldn't immediately be an Avenger after the end of Endgame. Okay. Uh, my biggest thoughts are... I uh, my biggest suspicions are Iron Man, Captain America are most likely to die. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. and Steve Ro Steve Rogers, Chris. What's what's Chris? Not Chris Which Chris Fine. is? He? Which Chris is he? Yeah. It's Hemsworth? not Chris. Hum no, no, that's no. that's that's. Uh, Roger, no, not Rogers. That's, oh that's Thor. Evans. Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Oh my God. Chris Evans. Chris, Chris Evans and. Robert Downey Jr. I mean, they've been playing these parts for almost a, pretty much a decade now. Yeah, over so a I, decade. Yeah, so I feel I feel like you know contracts and everything. I'm sure that like yeah they would rather have them and like obviously like also it's good for their character arc overall. Yes, and like, like this is a point where it makes sense. Um, but and I, I'm imagining that like at least as far as Captain America the character. It's possible too that like Captain America, like Steve Rogers dies, but like Captain America still exists. Oh, that's that's the exact thing I was gonna say because from what I understand from the comics, there are actually already replacements in line for both of them. Yes, because we've yeah. got War Machine mm -hmm. who could take up the Iron Man mantle. Mantle, just... Iron Mantle. Boo. Uh, <laughs> And actually, both Falcon and Winter Soldier have taken up the Cap Shield. Yes, they have. 
So, and I mean, both of them disappeared in the snap. That's fair. They did. So either of them could become, would, would very much be ready to become the next Captain America. Mm -hmm. Who do you Um, think is most likely to be the next Captain America if they do go that route? There's just so much that went on with Bucky. I think it would be him. Okay. And you think Falcon would just stay Falcon? Falcon would stay Falcon. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, I mean, Black Widow sounds like she's not dying because she's getting her own movie soon. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Scarlet Witch is... is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Thor Maybe. would also be interesting. Yeah, Hawkeye, because, like, he's doing it to save his family, but is he going to end up having to sacrifice his life to save his family? Right. Um, Thor and Incredible Hulk are also going to be interesting. Because right. Thor has lost his, his homeland completely, entirely. Right. Finally, finally, for once. Um, <clears throat> so how much he has left to lose is low. Right. So it might also be time for him. Uh, uh, Incredible Hulk is also just weird just because also the rights to do Incredible Hulk is weird. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, that uh. might also just be a can... If that... It, the only that, problem is, like, how would they kill off Bruce Banner? <laughs> He's the Hulk! Yeah. Like, like unless well, he, like... Hulk's- Unless, unless, like, Thanos just punches him in the face. <laughs> like, I mean, the, the I mean, there's stuff going on with the Hulk that's definitely going to be resolved in Endgame. Probably, uh, yeah. I, I do think, uh, out besides the one we know that's anticipating a film, I, Hulk would probably be least likely to die. Mm-hmm. Um, but would still not be seen too regularly. Yeah, I don't imagine it. I would, I would imagine that would be the case. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of, like, like I feel like Scarlet Witch is definitely going to be a mainstay Avenger, especially mm-hmm. since I believe Scarlet Witch was a pretty big she, yeah, player she in disappeared. the comics. So. She disappeared. Doctor Strange disappeared. Mm-hmm. Most of the um, Guardians disappeared besides Rocket. Right. Do you think one of the Guardians would become an Avenger? No. Okay. I mean, that makes I, sense. Like, they're kind of their own little team. I think all of the Guardians are staying. Though, I do think, um... God, what's what's Gamora's sister? Nebula? Neb- yeah, there we go. I was thinking Galaxy. I'm like, no. No. Close! With I think no Nebula cigar. could also bite the bullet here. Okay, she might, yeah. yeah because, again, it depends upon what the plot of three would be. Right. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> Stuff going oh, on for sure. Um, Chester wants to be an <laughs> Avenger. So L- look at one... that. Listen to that part. That is definitely Avenger material. Yeah. <laughs> uh, though, one thing I'm very glad to say mm-hmm. is uh, every single person's theories about who's a secret squirrel and endgame is wrong. <laughs> Why? Because all the scrolls are not bad anymore. Why would they have a need to infiltrate? Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Infiltrate the Avengers. Yeah. Also, um, Ant Man as Avenger. No. 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 Okay. No way. He's. <laughs> no way. He's too weird. Ants. No. He's too can't have, we already have spiders in the Avengers. We can't have ants. Like, come on. What is this? A bug show? No. Well, I mean, like, he could, but, like, uh, Paul Rudd's character, uh, where it is. That's fair. That's fair. I, yeah. You get what I'm saying. No, I do. I do. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, we're not too far off from uh, Endgame. No, we are not. Definitely be talking about that once that comes out. Yep. And uh, if you did go see uh, Captain Marvel, let us know what you thought of it. Yeah, tell us all in the comments, tell us on Twitter, tell us wherever you can. Shout it into the heavens and maybe we'll hear it. 
don't yeah. know. Did you did you have any thoughts about what's coming up after? Oh, I, I, mostly... um, I mean, I don't have any like real big thoughts. As I've stated before, as I, although while I do watch a lot of the MCU movies, I'm not like as invested in the internal continuity as others are, so I'm not that like like into it in terms of like trying to guess what might happen so yeah 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 i got you um, but yeah so so i think i agree yeah. with most of your statements is my point. yeah okay i do so yeah I still think those movies are worth seeing once at the very least. Oh yeah, yeah. Even yeah, though even though even though I, I had some onions, I still think this movie is is a good time. Again, mostly for the woman empowerment and immigration story though, yeah, the, the Air Force. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yep. At least anyway. I will say at least it's not as egregious as um the Transformers films. Yeah. In terms of the way they just they just they 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 are they are in bed with the military. Yeah. Like 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 they they you know they they even like smoke a cigarette afterwards. Like it's it's that real. Uh, <laughs> can't yeah. wait for us to talk about Transformers Six. Get hyped. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have that means you know what sucks about that. That means we're gonna have to talk about all the other ones. I mean that was gonna happen anyway. So oh, now okay. we have there's there's a there's a tighter deadline Trail eh. to production and I'm still putting air quotes because I still am not a hundred percent convinced that uh Lorenzo knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Like, I'm like ninety percent there, but there's still a ten percent of me that's like he's he said some 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 things he has said some things that have come off as a, as fact but like don't feel right <laughs> no yeah so, so so yeah i guess look forward to anyway, our future review anyway, of T, tf6 yeah you yeah, know that's how long it takes for that to come out yeah um also bumblebee 2 apparently as well i mean like that i'm fine with i'm completely fine with the <laughs> bumblebee sequel yeah. It's just Babers needs to die. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Anyway, <laughs> this is the podcast of tangents. It it is. It really is. <laughs> but anyway, uh Alyssa, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the Rational Dude. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and well of course YouTube at Soundjack four twenty six. Uh, if you like this video, you should be su you be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to like and comment and share the video if you enjoyed. And with that being said, thanks for tuning in. This is Soundjack and Alyssa signing.